In this next episode featuring Chillicothe High School seniors and their special STEM projects, it's planning season. And let's see how things are working with the FarmBot, a project by Clark Coulter and Austin Tainer. FarmBot is, uh, is a robot that keeps track of plants uh, and waters them uh, via sequences and regiments uh, daily to weekly, uh, depending on how you set it up. Uh, it's basically an automatic garden. That's the simplest part of it. To build the structure itself, it took about two to three weeks. But then after that, assembling all the motors, the tracks, and uh, adding all the electronics to it, uh, it took about four to five weeks after the fact because we had some issues with wiring the track and everything. It was just a time-consuming event. We have it indoors, so it gets a lot less sunlight. Um, when we first built it, it was during the winter, so the sun was at a lower angle, so it was coming through the window, and now it's not. Uh, so we get a lot less sunlight on the farm bot, which means the plants have a little bit more trouble growing. Um, that can be solved by some grow lights, which we're hopefully going to get soon. Uh, and uh, also, we have a few mushrooms that grow in the farm bot because it's damp and in a dark environment. We got the, the soil in our farm bot. The first thing we did is uh, we set up our soil sensor, which is a small device that's capable of telling us what the moisture content of the soil is. Basically what that means is it would, uh, it, it's a two-pronged device that sticks into the ground and then checks the return of electricity from one prong to the other. So it's just completing a circuit in the soil and then it just tells how much of that electricity is returning and that tells us how much uh, moisture is in the soil and we set up that first because we wanted to be able to quickly automatically set up the farm bot to tell whether or not it needed to water itself. That took a little bit of time because we've never set up a soil sensor before and I'd never heard of a soil sensor before <laughs> before I started setting it up. So it was a big learning experience. Uh, after that um, we got to setting up our water system. The water system itself we needed to buy a pump because the farm bot itself came with a system hook for a hookup with a garden hose. And since there's no garden hose uh, connection outside, we had to problem solve that buying a pump. At the minute, we are trying to set it up to where we use a 50 gallon drum. Our hope is, because right now we have a five gallon bucket, our hope is that the 50 gallon drum, um, we won't have to refill that every time we try and water the farm bot, because right now, Every time we set up, we tell it to run its watering sequence uh, or it figures out it needs to run its watering sequence, it, uh, we kind of have to refill the entire bucket. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of a problem, but hopefully once we get the 50 gallon bucket set up, we'll only have to refill that maybe once, once a week, maybe once a month. Once we get the soil sensor working and once we got the water working, um, it, it was just as simple as telling it to plant the seeds where we wanted it to. Um, which was pretty simple with the web app. The web app allows you to kind of drag and drop uh, these little seed icons onto a coordinate grid, and then it's able to access those coordinates, and then it has a seeding head which uses a vacuum to pick up seeds, and then it places those seeds in the soil at the proper depth, and, uh, and they'll start growing as long as you have the watering sequence set up to water them. We have a camera on the farm bot that's capable of taking pictures of uh, different, uh, of like little squares on the farm bot. Um, we move it to a location, takes a picture, move it again, takes a picture. Um, and through that, we're capable of seeing what's going on in the farm bot uh, at any given time. Um, and there's another function we haven't set up yet, uh, but it has a weeding function. So it's able to look at those pictures and say, okay, this is the color that the plants we've planted in this farm bot should be, and here's the color that we do have. And if it's a like color of a weed or something like that, it, it takes a weeding head that it has and it uh, depresses the weed down into the ground so it will stop growing and it destroys it. I have learned a lot about agriculture and programming the robot. Uh, mostly the track system has had a few issues that need problem solving, but I've learned a lot from just the whole process in general uh, that will go well with computer science. I learned a lot about how to design robots in particular, track systems, uh, how gantries work, um, how to set up processes in a certain order to get certain things to happen. It's been, it's, it's been a lot of really good, really good skills that I don't think I, I could have gotten if I was going to any other school. We hope to harvest new plants and make it 
have it start growing plants for the community mm -hmm. and our school to use that are fresh and capable. There are a few things the farm bot can't do, um, which I think is important to talk about because uh, I, I don't want people to get the wrong idea because I know that we live in a small community and I've had a few people come up to me and talk about the farm bot before and they've had like a lot of questions about whether or not it would replace jobs. The farm bot won't replace jobs. It just makes them harder, really. <laughs> It's, it's kind of as simple as that. The, the farm bot is capable of doing a lot of the, the simple menial tasks, um, but it's not capable of harvesting its own plants. So that's, that's a manual task you have to do. Um, but it's, it's also a lot of setup. So I think that for, for a lot of things, um, it's, it's really nice. And for other things, it's, it's a little bit more difficult than, than you might want it to be. <laughs> there are a lot of plus sides to doing it the old fashioned way. <laughs>